Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? The shows you watch as a kid can have a lifelong impact on you. In this next chapter, I will be sharing a forum thread about a mysterious children's show that aired in Ohio in the 1970s. Enjoy this classic creepypasta written by Chris Straub. Does anyone remember this kid show? It was called Candle Cove, and I must have been six or seven. I never found reference to it anywhere, so I think it was on a local station around 1971 or 1972. I lived in Ironton at the time. I don't remember which station, but I do remember it was on at a weird time, like 4 p.m. It seems really familiar to me. I grew up outside of Ashland and was nine years old in 72. Candle Cove. Was it about pirates? I remember a pirate marionette at the mouth of a cave, like talking to a little girl. Yes, okay, I'm not crazy. I remember Pirate Percy. I was always kind of scared of him. He looked like he was built from parts of other dolls, real low budget. His head was an old porcelain baby doll, looked like an antique that didn't belong on the body. I don't remember what station this was. I don't think it was WTSF though. Sorry to resurrect this old thread, but I know exactly what show you mean, Sky Shale. I think Candle Cove ran for only a couple months in 71, not 72. I was 12 and watched it a few times with my brother. It was channel 58, whatever station that was. My mom would let me switch to it after the news. Let me see what I remember. It took place in Candle Cove, and it was about a little girl who imagined herself to be friends with pirates. The pirate ship was called the Laughing Stock, and Pirate Percy wasn't a very good pirate because he got scared too easily, and there was calliope music constantly playing. I don't remember the girl's name though, uh, Janice or Jade or something. I think it was Janice. Thank you, Jaren. Memories flooded back when you mentioned the Laughing Stock in Channel 58. I remember the bow of the ship was a wooden smiling face with the lower jaw submerged. It looked like it was swallowing the sea and it had that awful Ed Wynn voice and laugh. I especially remember how jarring it was when they switched from the wooden plastic model to the foam puppet version of the head that talked. <laughs> yeah, I remember now too. You remember this part, Sky Show? You have to go inside. Ugh, Mike, I got a chill reading that. Yes, I remember. That's what the ship always told Percy when there was a spooky place he had to go in, like a cave or a dark room where the treasure was. And the camera would push in on Laughingstock's face with each pause. You have to go inside. With his two eyes askew and that flopping foam jaw and the fishing line that opened and closed it, ugh, it just looks so cheap and awful. You guys remember the villain? He had a face that was just a handlebar mustache above really tall, narrow teeth. I honestly, honestly thought the villain was Pirate Percy. I was about five when the show was on Nightmare Fuel. That wasn't the villain, the puppet with the mustache. That was the villain's sidekick, Horace Horrible. He had a monocle too, but it was on top of the mustache. I used to think that meant he only had one eye. But yeah, the villain was another marionette, the skin taker. <laughs> I can't believe what they used to let us watch back then. Jesus H. Christ, the skin taker. What kind of kids show were we watching? I seriously could not look at the screen when the skin taker showed up and he just descended out of nowhere on his strings, just dirty skeleton, wearing that brown top hat and cape, and his glass eyes that were too big for his skull. Christ almighty. Wasn't his top hat and cloak all sewn up crazily? Was that supposed to be children's skin? Yeah, I think so. Remember his mouth didn't open and close? Like his jaw just slid back and forth? I remember the little girl said, why does your mouth move like that? And the skin taker didn't look at the girl, but at the camera and said, To grind your skin. I'm so relieved that other people remember this terrible show. I used to have this awful memory, a bad dream I had where the opening jingle ended, the show faded in from black, and all the characters were there. But the camera was just cutting to each of their faces, and they were just screaming. And the puppets and earrings were falling spastically, and just all screaming, screaming. The girl was just moaning and crying like she had been through hours of this. I woke up many times from that nightmare. I used to wet the bed when I had it. I don't think that was a dream. I remember that. I remember that was an episode. No, 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 not possible. There was no plot or anything. I mean, literally just standing in place crying and screaming for the whole show. Maybe I'm manufacturing the memory because you said that, but I swear to God I remember seeing what you described. They just screamed. 
Oh God, yes, the little girl Janice. I remember seeing her shake and the skin taker screaming through his gnashing teeth, his jaw careening so wildly I thought it would come off its wire hinges. I turned it off and it was the last time I watched. I ran to tell my brother and we didn't have the courage to turn it back on. Visited my mom today at the nursing home. I asked her about when I was little in the early 70s, when I was eight or nine, and if she remembered a kid's show, Candle Cove. She said she was surprised I could remember that, and I asked why. And she said, because I used to think it was so strange that you said, I'm gonna go watch Candle Cove now, mom. And then you would tune the TV to static and just watch dead air for 30 minutes. You had a big imagination with your little pirate show. Legend has it that there are websites on the deep dark web where you can pay to watch a live murder. These are called Red Rooms, named after a popular Japanese urban legend. Why is it called a Red Room? Let this story by username Violet Sumire explain. It was my rare day off, a day where I didn't have to worry about all the traveling and the chaos that usually accompanies my work, a day where I can just relax. Most people might spend it doing something active, going out camping or to an event or to play sports. I like to spend my break by being sedentary, cuddling up with a good book, looking up random things on the internet, and general lazing around are my favorite things. I was doing the second thing on my list when something strange happened. I have a pretty new laptop with the newest operating system, so when the pop-up came up on my screen, it was a bit surprising. Not just because I have pop-ups disabled, but because the format and the style of it was of the older operating system. I frowned, hoping that I didn't have a virus or something. My first thought when anything goes wrong with my computer. The message on the pop-up was written in Japanese and it read, Do you, Do you like, like it? it? The text was in black and the background was a bright red. There was nothing else in the ad. I scrunched my face in confusion, but I figured that it was just one of those congratulations, you win a new game console type of things that messed up. The website that I was on wasn't the most legitimate looking. I shrugged it off and clicked on the big red X in the corner to close it out. I left the site as well for good measure and decided to get some tea before streaming some shows. I was only gone for 10 minutes, but when I came back into my room, the ad was there again. Now I was more worried about the possibility of a virus. I didn't have anything open on my computer, so it definitely wasn't just some pop-up. I closed out of it again and went to run a computer scan when it appeared again. Except this time, a voice followed it. Do you, Do you like, like, it? It? like it? It was a high-pitched child's voice. The voice seemed to echo as if someone was talking in a tunnel. Like it? Like it rang in my like ears, it? so I reached Do to turn like the volume it? off, like but my computer was already muted. I felt goosebumps travel up my spine. I closed out of the pop-up again, but it simply came right back up, the voice louder. I immediately closed my laptop. Nope, not today, I muttered out loud. I went to go out of my room, but my door wouldn't open. I frantically pulled on the knob. There was no lock on the door. There was a pinging noise behind me and I jumped. I looked at the computer on the table with bated breath. Do you like the red? The voice now asked. At this moment, I knew what this was. How could I not? It was a very popular urban legend in Japan. This was the, the Red, Red Room. Room. I ran to my window and threw open the curtains. I pushed at the frame, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. I looked out and hoped that someone would be outside as it was still in the middle of the day, but the street outside was sparse. Behind me, the child's voice was growing louder. The question now in a continuous loop. Do you like to like to red? Do you like to like to red? Do you like to like to red? I felt tears of frustration running down my face as it grew harder and harder to hear my own thoughts, but I needed to get out. My phone was in the kitchen, so I couldn't call for help. I looked for something I could use in my room. I grabbed my chair and began to use its legs to try to break the window. It took a few tries, but I could begin to see the cracks form in the glass. I also noticed that my room was growing darker, even though the sky was cloudless blue. I stood still, the chair no longer in my hands, but on the floor, forgotten. I should have ran to the window and broke off the rest of the glass to escape, but a foreboding feeling in the pit of my stomach prevented me from moving. That and the breath on the nape of my neck. Do you like, Do you the, like red the red room? room? Red. 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 Of course I like the red room. Red. Red. I've always wanted a red room. Red. Red. This room is not red. I had to fix that. Red. I searched around my desk. Red. Red. Box cutter. Perfect. Red. 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 Hands isn't enough. I need more. 
have to make sure not to waste a single drop. The banging at the door woke me up. Sumire. I recognized that voice. It was my coworker, Sora. I groaned. What is he doing here on my day off? I slowly opened my eyes and almost passed out as dizziness suddenly hit me. There was a splintering of wood, an intake of breath. What happened in here? I barely caught his question as my vision went black for a second. What are you doing here? I managed to mumble. I looked up into his face and realized that I was sitting in the middle of my room. You didn't come in to work today, so I came to check up on you. Right on time too, it looks like. My head was starting to clear and I felt stinging pain from all over my body. It's my day off. Sori gave me a look. That was yesterday. I looked down in confusion, too tired to hold my head up and saw my hands. They were covered in blood. My eyes traveled up my arm where cuts were engraved in almost every part of my skin. I had apparently taken off my clothes as well and my legs were in the same state as my arms. I looked up at Sora fearfully. Let's get you to the doctor. He gently wrapped a blanket from my bed around me and carried me. It was then that I noticed the state of my room. Red. There was blood all over the walls. My blood. I pulled on Sora's clothes. My laptop. Check my laptop. Setting me down gently on my feet, he opened my laptop. There was a single window open. A single screen with black text framed in a bulky old-fashioned window. Do you like, Do you the, like red the red room? room? And now we close this volume's final chapter with a story written by username Amethyst Locke. My friend Shelly sent me an email last week about her trip to Arkansas, where I'm from. We have been close friends since kindergarten, but she recently moved away for her career. Hey Sarah, I hope you're doing well. I know you're into all that horror shit, so I wanted to tell you about this haunted house me and Randy went to recently when we were in Arkansas. It's by some old guy named Mr. Wilkinson. He and his family decorate the house and it has some awesome scares. Randy found this on Yelp and has almost all five-star ratings by like over 100 people. The house is very small though, but I promise it'll freak you out. Bring along your chicken shit friend, Mindy. Address is 1124 Cherry Highland, Arkansas. Let me know how you liked it. Love ya. Of course I was interested, so I called her up for more details. First, there are going to be some cheap Halloween decorations out in the front, and some mildly scary stuff inside where you'll see some people standing completely still or laying down. If you walk slow, they will jump at you. It's a great scare, but if you get scared easily, just power walk through the house. It's not very hard to get through and exit to the backyard. Watch out for that fake blood stuff on the walls. It's hard to remove from your clothes later. But when you're in the backyard, that's where the best scares begin. Once you get there, you'll notice that there aren't any exits. So after one to two minutes of walking around, the backyard lights will go out and it'll be pitch black. A very large clown with bloody red teeth will show up soon and take you somewhere. And then I don't want to ruin the rest of the scares for you, so you'll have to see for yourself. So my friend Mindy and I get to this house on Cherry Road. We pushed the door open and it made a loud creak. We saw the cheap decorations outside the house, which were very lame and made me wonder why even bother with these. Once inside, we noticed it was a medium sized room and we couldn't see a whole lot except the carpet area because it was very dim. The only thing giving light was the television set. There was an obese man laying on the floor with vomit all over him. Next to him was a mannequin with lipstick and no clothes on. We slowly started to walk past him, but only thing on my mind right now was the clown with bloody teeth. We kept walking and followed the bloody trail on the carpet, which told us which direction to go. As we walked past the man, he made a very loud belch, which made me almost crap my pants. I grabbed Mindy and made a power walk over to the loud staticky television set. It had two small red handprints on them. Next came the long hallway in which I could see the exit door to the backyard up ahead. Shelly wasn't kidding when she said it was a small house. As we slowly walked in the hallway, the clown kept appearing in my head, smiling with his crimson drenched teeth. We passed a closed door with blood smeared all over it. We heard screaming inside that room and then a loud gunshot. The sound really hurt my eardrum to be honest. They have had to use a real gun for this sound effect. We kept walking and saw a bucket of red and yellow paint on the floor with no paintbrush in it. So far, this house was excellent. I couldn't wait to get to the backyard but a part of me didn't want to go because I didn't know what to expect. This clown with the bloody teeth was in my nightmare last night and he's been on my mind ever since. We heard a maniacal laugh from the room we just passed. 
the loud and deep voice spoke while laughing. Who's this? Then we heard the sound of loud boots walk towards the door and the handle slowly turned. Mindy and I were just about ready to scream and ran for it. We opened the door to the backyard and literally jumped the three wooden steps onto the grass. This was it, the moment of truth. I was literally shaking as if it was 10 below. The door which we came from shut behind us with a very loud thud. It was Shelly. I was shocked and happy at the same time, knowing that I had signal back here. So, did you like it? Pretty creepy shit, huh? Shelly, I'm gonna have to call you back. We just got in the backyard. But yes, this was one of the best scares I've had so far. So can I ask you, where is this clown going to take us? Oh no, you're gonna find that out for yourself. I don't wanna ruin it for you. Well, call me back when you're done with the house. Bye. We waited. Minute had gone by very slowly. We can hear the crickets chirping in the distance. Two minutes, three, four, five. We were really getting restless on where this clown was. I hope he wasn't gonna jump scare us from behind so I kept looking back every few seconds. I called Shelly back. Hey Shelly, we're still waiting for the clown to show up, but while I still have signal, Minnie wanted to know once we get back on the street after we're done, from Cherry Road do we make a left or a right on Hillview to get to the freeway? Did you say Cherry Road? This house is on Cherry Lane. What house are you in? What better way to celebrate Snarled's new gaming channel, Slay Tricks, than with a story about a video game with a deadly secret? This is the story of Pale Luna by Ed. In the last decade and a half, it's become infinitely easier to obtain exactly what you're looking for by way of a couple of keystrokes. The internet has made it all too simple to use a computer to change reality. An abundance of information is merely a search engine away, to the point where it's hard to imagine life is any different. Yet, a generation ago, when the words streaming and torrent were meaningless, save for conversations about water, people met face-to-face -to, -face to conduct software swap parties, trading games and applications on Sharpie-labeled five and a quarter inch floppies. Most of the time, the meets were a way for frugal, community-minded individuals to trade popular games amongst themselves. However, a few early programming talents designed their own computer games to share amongst their circle of acquaintances, who in turn would pass it on until it had its place in the collection of aficionados across the country. Think of it as the 80s equivalent of a viral video. Pale Luna, on the other hand, was never circulated outside of the San Francisco Bay Area. All known copies have been long disposed of. This fact is attributed to a number of rather abstruse design choices made by its programmer. Pale Luna was a text adventure in the vein of Zork and the Lurking Horror, at a time when said genre was swiftly going out of fashion. Upon booting the program, the player was presented with a screen, almost completely blank, except for the text. You, you are, are in, in a, dark a dark room. room. Moonlight, Moonlight shines, shines through the window. The window. There, there is gold, gold in the corner, corner along, along with, with a shovel and a rope. rope. There, there is, is a door, door to the east. east. Command? Command? So began the game that one writer, for a long out of print fanzine, decried as enigmatic, nonsensical, and completely unplayable, as the only commands that the game would accept were pick up gold, pick up shovel, pick up rope, open door, and go east. The player was soon presented with the following. Reap, Reap your reward. reward. Pale, Pale Luna smiles, smiles at you. You are in a forest. forest. There are paths, paths to, to the north, north west, west, and east. Command. Command. What quickly infuriated the few who've played the game was the confusing and buggy nature of the second screen onward. Only one of the directional decisions would be the correct one. For example, a command to go in a direction other than north would lead to the system freezing, requiring the operator to hard reboot the entire computer. Further, any subsequent screens seem to merely repeat the above text. Worse still, the standard text adventure commands appeared to be useless. The only accepted non-movement related prompts were use gold, which caused the game to display the message, not here. Use shovel, which brought up, not now. And use rope, which prompted the text, you've already used this. Most who played the game progressed a couple of screens into it before becoming fed up by having to constantly reboot and tossing the disc in disgust, writing off the experience as a shoddily programmed farce. However, one young man by the name of Michael Nevins decided to see if there was more to Pale Luna than what met the eye. Five hours and 33 screens worth of trial and error and unplugged computer cords later, 
he finally managed to make the game display different text. The text in this new area read, Pale, Pale Luna, Luna smiles wide. wide. There are no paths. Pale, Pale Luna, Luna smiles wide. The ground is soft. Pale, Pale Luna, Luna smiles wide. Here, command. It was another hour still before Michael stumbled upon the proper combination of phrases to make the game progress any further. Dig hole, drop gold, then fill hole. This caused the screen to display. Congratulations! After some deliberation, Michael came to the conclusion that the numbers refer to lines of latitude and longitude. The coordinates led to a point in the sprawling forest that dominated the nearby Lassen Volcanic Park. As he possessed much more free time than sense, Michael vowed to see Paluna through to its ending. The next day, armed with a map, a compass, and a shovel, he navigated the park's trails, noting with amusement how each turn he made corresponded roughly to those he took in-game. Though he initially regretted bringing the cumbersome digging tool on a mere hunch, the path's similarity all but confirmed his suspicions that the journey would end with him face to face with an eccentric's buried treasure. Out of breath, he was pleasantly surprised by a literal stumble upon a patch of uneven dirt. Shoveling as excitedly as he was, it would be an understatement to say that he was taken aback when his heavy strokes unearthed the badly decomposing head of a blonde-haired little girl. Pick up gold. Pick up rope. Use rope. You've, You've already, already used this. this. Use gold. Reap your reward. Dig hole. Drop gold. Then fill Pale hole. Pale Luna smiles at you. Michael promptly reported the situation to the authorities. The girl was identified as Karen Paulson, 11, reported as missing to the San Diego Police Department a year and a half prior. Efforts were made to track down the programmer of Pale Luna, but the nearly anonymous legal gray area in which the software swapping community operated inescapably led to many dead ends. The rest of Karen's body was never found. Like this video if it gave you the chills, and don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and our new gaming channel, Slatrix. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.